This is episode 44 of the Bits For You podcast. This is your host, Robert. How are you? This is the uh, Christmas edition episode, Christmas special episode, Christmas or holiday episode, uh, Hanukkah episode, Kwanzaa episode, and any other fucking holiday episode that you want to tag on to that. Uh, so uh, this is the... Uh, our, top games of 2017 episode and uh, we each uh, go through our share of top games i didn't get to play a lot of uh, games that were released in 2017 uh busy year i suppose traveling etc work and other things in between um we talk about our bachelor party weekend I'm getting married in 15 days, two weeks, uh, something like that. I convinced Javier to get on the PlayStation Plus. It's a possibility. Stay tuned to find out. Uh, so as we were recording this, uh, we had some technical difficulties. Um, we probably think that net, to net neutrality began to fuck with us directly while recording this. Uh, the fucking FCC repealing that. Nah, that's no bueno. We already felt the effects uh, a couple of days before the uh, up, reappeal, the appeal. Thoughts on video game release? Video games releasing soundtracks on CD. I go into a um, discussion with Javier on my thoughts on it, and I want to hear your thoughts on it. So, email us at bits for you podcast at gmail dot com. That's uh, B A T S the number four. Y-O-U, podcast at gmail.com. The, the uh, email link is going to be in the description of this episode. And we review the holiday horror cult classic film, Thanks Killing. We can go into other little discussions here and there. So uh, stay tuned. After this, we have one more episode pre-recorded. Uh, should be coming out uh, right before New Year's. And I think that'll be it. I... Because of um, weddings and stuff in, in early January. Might not have time to do any podcasts for the first week. Maybe a couple, maybe the first couple weeks of uh, January. So at, th at that point, I'll just uh, tweet on our Bits For You podcast Twitter. Uh, Facebook as well. Instagram, all that stuff. All the social media stuff, uh, we will do like a... Uh, top uh, recommendation top recommended episodes or our most downloaded episodes or most uh well received episodes we'll uh post it on social media so you guys can have a listen and give us your thoughts or you guys can let us know which episodes were the uh your favorite ones and we can just uh repost those links so you guys can uh listen to them if you guys want uh yeah that's it merry christmas feliz navidad Happy New Year. All that good stuff. All right. Hasta the luegos. <laughs> I'm supposed. I'm assuming we're gonna release that episode next week, right? That's the plan. That's what you told me. Yeah, next week would be a good week. Oh, very, very, very interesting. So, so what's up with you? Uh, I was. Uh, I took. Oh, I completely lost track of time until I got your Skype call so i was helping my my fiance with um the sims 4 she started at, at target we had the target gift cards and we got that how exciting i know we got that and that's when uh i was looking what can i get and then i remembered oh xenoblade came out uh a week or two ago 
two weeks ago almost. So uh, they didn't have the they didn't have it on the shelf. Like they had a bunch of empty slots. I'm like, why do they have a lot of empty slots? Maybe those games are sold out. I don't know. So then when the I asked the guy, do you have Sino Blades? And he's like, uh, yeah, it's right there. I'm like, oh, cool. I'm like, wait a second, this is a special edition. He's like, I think that's the only one I have, but let me check. So we go to the front, and um, he he looks it up on his computer, and he's like, oh, no, we do have one. I'm like, you know what? I'll just take this one. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, I was, I was just looking at Amazon. They still have it, too. <laughs> the special edition? I have edition? no idea how well this game sold. I have no idea. Um, I'm assuming it sold well. It was highly publicized. They did a fucking direct, uh, Nintendo Direct, all, all about it. What did you say? Yeah, they've been advertising it, but it's a Japanese RPG. They don't usually have too much faith in those. So. Yeah, that's true. You never know. I, I really don't know, but uh, I I would hope so. It's it's a good game. I'm enjoying it. A lot. I haven't. Yeah, I haven't played it. I haven't. Uh, I'm surprised because this is a that game's a commitment. It's gonna be a long game. Did we already talk about the game or no? We haven't talked about it, right? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we did. Oh, about you bit. playing it? Yeah. So, so tell us I'm, how 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 are you liking it after playing it a little longer? Well, I'll talk about it more when we do our top ten. Oh Jesus, fuck! The top <laughs> ten. What do yeah. you do? So uh, top ten, t- top ten games of the year for me. Top five for you. I'll let you start the, the conversation. The list. You Whatever, if you, want, if you want to start talking about that, we can. You can hype it up. Hype it up? Like Our what? Top you, ten, you, want, you, want a, you want a drum roll? <laughs> yeah, drum roll. Oh, okay. There. All right, I start with number 10. Gosh, <laughs> you, have a, you have it numbered and everything? Yeah. Oh, I'm not numbering them, but go ahead. Right, I'm going to go from the bottom, like I said, number 10. Number 10 has been out on other systems, but it, it came out this year on the Switch. First time I played it, so I qualified it for my top 10. It's only multiplayer, uh, co- uh, local. The game is overcooked. Oh, what a piece of shit. <laughs> are, are you even aware of what the game is? Yeah, I actually have it on my wish list. I just haven't gotten around to purchasing it. It's a cheap game. I think I bought it for like Ten fifteen dollars, uh, but it's a lot of a lot of time you can play with it. Um, the only disadvantage of this game for me is that I have to play it locally with friends. Uh, eventually, my fiance uh, was just, was just getting too tough for her, and she was getting frustrated a lot. So it wasn't as fun for her as much. Um, but she should say she want to play again. But anyways, so to me, you know, this is a cooking game. Where you go, you work with others to create as many dishes as you can within a certain time frame. Mm-hmm. And you get points, uh, get a certain amount of points to pass the level. And, you know, as you beat it, you unlock other levels. What gets harder and harder is that they expect you to score really high in the levels to unlock the other later, you know, the later le- levels. Right. So it does get pretty tough because you have to basically master the old stuff and to get, move on further. Um, I enjoyed it because of the gameplay, you know, you ch- Everybody has their own task. Right. It's not like assigned to you. You just tell the other person, do this, do this, that, or I do this. Like, someone has to chop the tomatoes. But, but what do I want to do tomato. that? Yeah, you pick whatever. But we have to be organized. And and we have to be, you know, fast and, and, and organized, basically, with all this chaos happening. Mm. What happens is a lot of things happen. Like, there's a lot of obstacles. Like, sometimes your kitchen, you're cooking and, like, in... And North Pole or something, so it's the ice is on, on the ground, you're slippery around it, or you're cooking at the, the base of a volcano, you get burned. All these cool things are happening. I like it. I I kind of miss local multiplayers. They're basically a dying breed at this point. So, anyways, that's my number ten. Hmm. Number ten, really, a fucking yeah. cooking game. I think I think you must be. You didn't get a fever or anything in Orlando, did you? When no. we went for my bachelor party? No. Which actually we're going to discuss in t- full detail after the top 10. No. <laughs> yes, we will. I'm kidding. I'm Because you're already silent. You're like, uh, no. 
<laughs> right. Oh, that will remain a mystery. We won't yeah. discuss it. We played mini golf. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, we actually did. And we went to a dance club. Yeah, I shook my booty all night long. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Number nine. What's your? Since you're numbering them, what's your number nine? Yeah, you want to do number five? You want to wait until I get to five? What? I thought you were doing top ten and going in order. I thought we were going to take turns. No, fuck that. You finish. Go ahead. Nah, I don't, I don't think people want to hear my voice the whole time. I'll just go to five and then we start switching. We go to five? What the fuck are you doing? Why would you go to five? Yeah, and then we, we start taking turns. You're not going to do all ten games? No. Nah. I want to. I thought you. I thought. Voice. I thought you said the top ten. I do have ten. So the do... just fucking say it. Number nine. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Mm. Crash Bandicoot, insane trilogy. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's a fun, you know, uh, platformer. Uh, I don't know. I say besides that, <laughs> the, the remaster. It, I mean, it's really it's real. It's well uh, done. Uh, mm-hmm. It's redone. It's not like just. Like, it's a little simple HD version. This is like they remade the whole game. Yeah, and, uh, they fixed so uh, a lot of the uh, some of the issues that, that the original had. They improved it. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's 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 a hard platformer. It's not something easy. It comes to the first three ga- uh, Crash Bandicoot games. I still on just in part one, but uh, towards the end of part one. But you know, it's just reminding me how much fun it, you know Crash Bandicoot is, and it's sad that it went away. Maybe this will spark some interest. I don't know. Hmm. Uh, I almost I came close to picking it up today, mm. but I couldn't pass it up with the uh, Xenoblade uh, Chronicles Two Special Edition on the Switch. Mm-hmm. So, so number eight. Number eight for me is Sonic Mania. I played it on the Nintendo Switch. It's uh. Everybody was uh, praising it. It's a very fun 2D Sonic game. It's been a long time since we had a good Sonic game. I had it. I mentioned on Twitter, and I was like, the last one was Sonic Adventures 2. Well, someone corrected me. I said Sonic Adventure, but it's Adventures 2, and I'm like, yeah, that one. But anyways, uh, Sonic Forces came out and didn't uh, didn't have that praise. I thought it was kind of weird to have two Sonic games within a few months of each other. Yeah, that but was anyway. that was very weird. Yeah, so I'm like. Right now, going through my second playthrough. When I say uh, that, I mean I actually played it yesterday. So I'm, I'm playing it through with Knuckles now. I'm towards the end with him. Is it? Does the gameplay mechanic change? Yeah, he does. He's different from Sonic. He mm. has he climbs and stuff like that. He's a little bit slower paced, right. but it's fun. Okay, so that's your that's on your list. Oh shit! You know what? I went out of order. What the <laughs> fuck? And look at you fucking complaining earlier. I know. Like that was actually number, number seven. I had a number eight. It doesn't matter. Just uh, So yeah. that's number seven. So now you, you can skip that. So what's number eight? Yeah. Has been Heroes. Oh, wow. That actually made your list? Yeah. Actually, I have a lot of hours in that game. A roguelike uh, game, right? Let's put it this way. I have more hours in that game than I do on Mario Odyssey. Wow, you suck. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a roguelike game. Uh, it's not a uh, you know two D. It's all about. Like, I say roguelike game. Like you, you start all over again with nothing. The only thing you unlock is like here. It'll stay unlocked, but you lose everything else. Uh, so you go through uh, levels, and um, levels have these monsters. You have to do combos to kill them, or. You know, it's, they can stack up if you don't successfully pull out great combos and, and great timing. Otherwise, you're going to overrun and you die, and then game over. Hmm. Uh, each of heroes have HP. They don't have that much. There's a hero that only has, like, one. So one hit, he's dead. Game over. Start all over again. So it's tough. And it's a big learning curve. But it's a lot of fun once you get the hang of it. I, I beat it several times. You have to, anyways, to unlock heroes. Um, so I haven't unlocked all of them. But, How uh, many heroes actually... in total are there, avi- are there available to unlock? I think it's like ten or something. I haven't, I haven't unlocked them all, like I said. 
Mm. Have like six unlocked or something like that. Um, yeah, I already mentioned uh, Sonic. Right. Was number seven. So no, number six. Tell me, sir. I put Xenoblade Chronicles two. Oh gosh, number six. Oh no, that's not a good. Why? So why? Why? Why six? Because you haven't had it. It's only been out for like uh, nine, ten days. You haven't had a lot of time to play with it. I mean, the top five games are really good games. It's uh, it's tough. I, I'm top just curious to find out what, why, you, what, what game was better than Xenoblade Chronicles Two. Yeah, when I say my top five, you, you're gonna see. Jesus. But basically, Xenoblade Two. Uh, since we're gonna talk about it now, I only have a few problems with the game. Um, I have yet to play it, so try not to be too spoiled. And a lot of people haven't played it yet, so. It's a long game. I'm not going to yeah. try to spoil anything for people. I'm just going to talk about mechanics. Yeah, that's fine. Well, that's spoiling story. So one thing that kind of bothers me a little bit, mm-hmm. I got an over it at this point, was the lip syncing. It's out of order. It's, it's, the lips don't sync with what they're saying. Wait, in English and Japanese or just English? In English. I haven't tried it in Japanese. Oh, but... so that's bad dubbing. Or they just they were, they got lazy with the, with the animations for the lip syncing. The thing is, I, usually these games are like this. Like they're not, or there's text based. Like to be honest, most of the time they're text based. Right. To me, this game wasn't. Uh, this, is, this is the overall problem I have with the game. It's not polished well enough to hit the top five, but it's still a very good game. Hmm. They definitely spent their time on on the mechanics of the game, like the gameplay. The problem is just not fully polished out, like something like this. Uh. I had so, other thoughts on my mind. I don't know why. So maybe forgetting. maybe they had a deadline and they felt rushed. I, I actually, to be honest, playing through this game, I almost felt like this was made was meant for the Wii U. Uh, but Wii U, Wii U bombed. They're still making this game, so they uh, they ported came it. off of the Switch. Yeah, yeah. ported it because I, uh, I remember reading something about it that it was originally meant. I think you're right. I think I, I read something online, you know, when the Wii U, when, before the Switch was even announced, that they were working on Xenoblade Chronicles for the Wii U. I don't remember that, but I can tell you, well, it looks do. like to me they were working, like, graphically, they could have done better. And another thing is, when I say polishing, this game isn't uh, on par with, uh, in terms of graphics and stuff with other games. But, uh, uh, hold on a second. Hold on. Well, while I hold on, uh, we have. I did a uh, on on Twitter. I asked a few days ago, uh, what are some of the best games you've played in 2017? Let us know and get mentioned on you know on the on the podcast. And we got a mention. Uh, we got a tweet from Premier Quest. They are a Pacific Rim uh, and Pacific Rim Uprising podcast. They uh, all they do is talk about their passion, their love for Pacific Rim, the movie, and they said that uh, they went with uh, Horizon Zero Dawn on the PS4 is their top game of 2017. So there you have it. Uh, shout out to Premier Quest Day. Your top game was Horizon Zero Dawn, yes. and uh, Javier, you're back. So you had to scratch your balls. That's why you went away. No, it's just my roommate. Oh, your roommate. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Xenoblade. So, Xenoblade. The, the, yeah, the other thing I was going to mention, because uh, I didn't really get to test this out till I traveled to Orlando for our bachelor's party, or your bachelor party. My bachelor party, son of a bitch. That I organized. <laughs> yes. And it was fun. So, if anybody is having a, uh, is getting married and they need tips on bachelor parties, Javier can work that out. <laughs> can give you advice. <laughs> Yeah. So on oh. the plane, you know, I played Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Okay. And uh, my flight wasn't that long. It was two and a half hours. Right. My my Switch almost died on battery each way. Really? And I'm like, okay, yeah, so this game is heavy. I, I think uh, they didn't manage uh, the battery power with this game too much. It's probably not as... as my guess is that for it to be like that, it was just not efficient because Zelda, which looks a lot better than this game and bigger and is bigger than the I, I, I can't say for sure, but I'm pretty sure it's bigger than Zelda Blades 2 is uh, doesn't, doesn't it takes you can play for three hours, not two and a half. Right. 
So to me, this means this game, uh, you know, it's a, you know, I'm a software engineer, programmer. Or and I, I, I see this kind of stuff. I'm like, they just not are being efficient. Something's leaking in terms of memory or whatever. Right. Or they're just holding to a resource too long or doing something inefficient, some inefficient algorithm or right. something. Or, or the battery on your Switch isn't lasting as long. No, I, I, uh, I barely uh, used it uh, undocked. So mm. okay. I seriously doubt it. So that game is heavy on, on, the, on the handheld build. Wow. But anyways, it's, it's just overall, I'm just giving you a few examples. It's just not polished enough to be top five for me. But it's still a very fun and good game. So how about you hit your number five? My number five? Yeah, and then I'll hit my number five. Oh, uh, I don't have a Let me see. One, two, three. All I have is four. I don't have a fifth game. Wow, you suck. Yeah, I do. I can't. I, can't I couldn't think of a fifth game. Right, because I don't want to. Because I, I think our top five might, you know, crisscross a bit here. So my number five on the list is Mario Odyssey. Damn, number five. That's yep. fucking bad, dude. Why is it bad? Because that's like fucking Nintendo's bread and butter, and you put it at number five. Shit, I would have put that on. T- if I was doing a number list, I would have put it at least top three. It didn't make my you're top gonna three. Put, you're gonna put some faggoty ass game uh, as as your top uh, top three. I, I just know it. <laughs> 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 Go ahead, continue. See, why is it? I don't think so. Obviously, why is it number five? My Odyssey and is a great game. Why is awesome it? Game. Why is it not number one, two, or three? Why is it number five? Because the other games are better. <laughs> okay, I hope they are. Go ahead. Oh, my Odyssey builds on Nintendo sixty four, Mario sixty four. Uh, obviously, it's a great game. It's built on something. It's not revolutionary. It's uh, there's a cool few things they added on, like the costume thing, the hat taking over enemies. That's really cool. Adding the two D. Retro stuff is cool. Overall, it, it's really good. I mean, I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, I beat it pretty quickly. It's only like a 20-hour game. Mm-hmm. That's with spending time going around. But, of course, there's still a lot of stuff after the, the, you beat the story. Um, and I, I'm still playing through it. It's not, I'm not completely done with it. And I complain about Xenoblade 2 not being polished. Obviously, Mario is extremely well-polished. Very. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I have no complaints on this game at all, really. It's just uh only thing I can say is that it was built on a previous game, and uh, it's kind of it's kind of funny to say that because my other there's at least one in this list of my top five uh, that uh, it's almost exactly like the first one. <laughs> exactly like the first one of what? Of, the, of a game in a franchise. I'll get to it. Oh, okay. But anyways. So- so very fun game. So that's. I'll let you talk more about it because I'm. I'm guessing it's in your top four. Yeah. Well. So. So Mario Odyssey is on uh, my top games of that I played this year. It's. Uh. It's just I haven't had uh, uh, that much fun playing a game in a fucking long time, and Nintendo brought it back with Mario. Um. I think we talked about it before in a previous uh episode on how, you know, how much I I fucking love the game, and yeah, that's why it made my it, it's make it made my top game uh. My top games of the year list. Um, it's very well polished. It's just fucking fun. The controls are smooth as fuck. And like if you've if you've played Mario Sunshine and and Mario sixty four, you'll you'll quickly jump right in. It's literally the controls are almost identical. The same button um, scheme, uh, control scheme. So, are you saying this is your number one? No, I'm not numbering them. They're just top games. I'd say. I'm not giving numbers. I did, and I know it's controversial to put it number five. Well, you did. That's why. I, I, I mean, I'm not putting numbers in my games, so it's just one of my top games of the year. That's just, it's just keyword top. Uh, so uh, it's just it's it's just fun. Like the I had some of my fairy kingdoms. Uh, I don't. I'm not. I'm not good with the names of the kingdoms. I can't recall them. I don't know if you are, Javi. If you are, you can jump in. But the kingdom in the in the desert. That was a, a, a great kingdom. I, I had a lot of fun in that kingdom. Uh, another kingdom I liked was the um, the Ice Kingdom. Or I don't know if it was called the Ice Kingdom. But the one in the snow, you know, that one. 
That I love that one as well. Uh, I wasn't so crazy about the Moon Kingdom. I thought, I, well, there's not much you can do with the Moon. It's just you know the whole gravity, and you can jump twice as high or twice as long. That was a cool feature, but after a while, it just gets kind of annoying because there's that's all you do in there. It's just you know just to go and and defeat Bowser. Um, what else stands out? I didn't like the. I wasn't so crazy about the kingdom with um, what's the, the one with the food, and the big pot and the and the bird on on the top that takes the pot. Yeah, like I there's some things I like, but I wasn't like that wasn't my favorite one. What about New Dunk City. Ah, uh, okay. So New Dunk City, that to me, I enjoyed it, but I didn't spend a lot of time in it. I never went back to it as much as the other kingdom. That's one of my favorite ones. I have to, yeah, I have to go back. Um, but I just been very busy. I, I spent a, uh, almost a month without playing Mario Odyssey, just fucking with birthdays and traveling, and just got busy. I, I um, I work. Excuses. Too. No, it's not excuses. Car, it's called life, motherfucker. Especially when I'm getting married, I have to. You're supposed to have anti-social life. Fuck that! That was the stupidest shit that we. Saw. <laughs> that was the stupidest shit uh, that we we posted that on Twitter. So we 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 uh we got to Orlando, uh, and uh, the what was it the the rule book right of the of the house that we got from Airbnb. Yeah, we used Airbnb. We got a house. Right. The house. And when we and when Javier was looking through the rules, and he found that shit. I was like, what the fuck. No anti-social behavior. Yeah, and then I'm like, yeah, okay. We re- we didn't even spend a lot of time in the house. All we we were there is just to shower and sleep. That's pretty, and we didn't even sleep a lot. So <laughs> anti-social. Wait, isn't behavior. isn't sleeping anti-social? Uh, yeah, because you're not. Well, it is if you're sleeping like a typical seven or eight hours. But we did we slept like four to five hours on average. Those couple nights we were there mm-hmm. so but uh going back to mario odyssey yeah those, i mean even even though, though those are the only things that were uh i guess a, a downer for mario odyssey it's uh, i'm just it's a great fucking game it, it for, for me if I, if I were to do like a scoring system i would it would score very high but it's not a perfect game um, but it's just because of those kingdoms that I had issues with. But other than that, it's a fucking fun game. Anybody that's that's picking up or uh, a Switch planning to this holiday season has to get that game. That's that's if there's the bundles are still out there, get it, get it with the bundle. It's it's fucking worth it. Um, yeah, and, it and is. if you and if you have the Switch and don't have it yet, the fuck are you waiting for? Go to the go to the store, buy it used, buy it new, whatever. Just play that game. You know, it's it's that it's that much fun. You'll, you'll fucking you'll love it. Um, okay. What's so, your next um, one? Number you, four. Because you already sound like you wanna you wanna interrupt me. Yeah. You son of a bitch. Number four. Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battles. Oh my Jesus, that's the piece of shit. Oh. My yeah, how can you call it a piece of shit? You don't even play it. Cause I don't even want to play it. Those the fucking those fu- uh, those those creatures that you fight. Um, in the Mario Odyssey, look like fucking rabbits, like oversized rabbits. <laughs> they do. I Ridiculous. wonder if there was supposed to be some kind of link there. Maybe you know? there was. I don't know. And Nintendo's like, oh, we'll just fucking use them. And ah, that's just. Anyway, <laughs> it's your list. Your opinion. <laughs> My opinion. I understand it's going to be controversial, to some degree. I know maybe people will put Mario Odyssey before this game. I put a lot. Of time into Mario Ra- Rabbids uh, game here, and uh, I beat it, and I went back continuously. I did the co-op part of it, almost finished it on co-op. Uh, I don't think I didn't finish the co-op is because I depend on others to play that. Right. I, mean, actually, I, I guess pretend- I could just do it myself, but whatever. I just want to do it with other people. Uh, I did all the challenges. I did uh, the only ones I haven't done are the very they're the ultimate challenges. I didn't do the season pass for this game. Uh, I looked into what they were doing with it, and it was not worth it for me. Well, so what were do they that. doing with it? Why, why weren't you interested in the season pass? The first part was just more co-op parts to it, and then like three more challenges or something. At this point, I'm so decked out. I don't unless it's like an ultimate challenge that's going crazy. I'm not gonna about it because the challenge, you know, challenges are easy, medium, hard, very hard, and then ultimate. So. 
Hmm. And I'm, at this point, my, all my characters are decked out. Uh, basically, almost everything's unlocked. I just, uh, I, I still have to finish some of the uh, ultimate challenges, but I played this game to death and I loved it. I, when I came out, I was playing it. You're cutting out, so I didn't hopefully expect, like, your connection doesn't drop. Okay. Hopefully you don't drop. No, hopefully you don't drop off the face of the earth. Yeah. <laughs> Get off Wi-Fi. How about that? Fuck that. My Wi-Fi is amazing. AT&T. <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> AT&T, buddy. The best. That's why it's... The <laughs> best. Stupid. I would have Verizon shit. Right. So what's the last thing you actually heard me say about Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle? That you were... You wish that the Rabbids were real so you can suck their dick? No. No? I think that's... You were imagining that. No, I don't imagine that shit. Right. <laughs> So yeah, I play, just played it a ton. I couldn't wait to play it more, and I played it a lot of it. Uh, so number four for me, a totally sleeper. I didn't expect it. I saw it in E3, and it looked pretty cool. I was like, oh, this is going to be a fun game. Uh-huh. And then I come, I play it, and holy crap, it's better than I expected. That's my uh, number four. Uh, you want to hit? How about one of yours? Give me another uh, top four, please. So um, next game for me was Super Mario. Oh, sorry, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I uh that's what the, I picked up that the Switch with that game and 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 Zelda so I found myself playing that game more than Zelda and it was just fun I I I I fucking love Mario Kart they it brought me back to you know the original Mario Kart and especially Mario Kart 64 um a lot of the classic levels were you know were all in there it's basically the same thing as the what was it the Wii U version, but just with all the extra expansions and things added in. And it's no, that a, that was that was in the original one. Just it was DLC. That's what I said. It was added in already. Just you know, you don't have to download it or DLC it. Uh, I just loved it. I just loved the game. Uh, Javier and I played it, you know, quite a quite a bit um, um, online. Um, we hosted tournaments that nobody played. <laughs> I don't think anybody played it. Your brother did. Uh, yeah, George did play it. You're right. So one person, and that's why I made my top top game. Uh, I I I would every now and then uh, I would I would still play it. This is that much fun. So Mario yeah. Mario Kart Eight Deluxe makes it for me. Cool. So I'll hit my number three. My number three is Splatoon Two. Fuck! I knew that. I can't believe you put Splatoon Two over greatness of uh, Mario Odyssey. Shit. My two highest played games Fucking on my Switch, yeah. one of them is Splatoon 2 at 95 hours. And I will put even more hours into it. So uh, I love the first one. I had it for the, I have it for the Wii U. And I played that for a very long time. Uh, not like I spend super amount of, uh, amount of hours every week, but it's something I kept on constantly going back to. I had so much fun with it. I remember watching it at E3 when it was first announced. Hey, this is a pretty cool idea. I like it. I like the whole ink, and then you can hide the ink and all this kind of stuff. And uh-huh. it refills your, uh, it's your ammo. So, uh, just to give a little bit more of a basis on it, uh, I didn't do that for these, some of these other games. <laughs> but basically, split in two, you're a kid, or maybe you're a squid. You transform, basically. You're a kid, and you have this paintball gun. Uh, well, it's not paint, it's ink. And when you're in squid form, you, you, uh, you soak up ink, and you use that to shoot people. Uh, you hit enough ink and they blow up. And they respawn later on. Uh, when you hit the ink on the floor, uh, it stays there. And then if uh, you could go into the sink, you could uh, transform into the, the squid and swim in the ink, so, and it cannot see you. And then you can pop up and shoot them. And it also refills your your ammo. Uh, and of course, the other enemy has a different color ink, so they could paint over your ink. And the fun, you know, pers- you know, goes on and on. Uh, there's different, many different modes. Part two added Splatoon, uh, sorry, Salmon Run. It's a co-op version of just doing waves of enemies, uh, with the bosses spawning as well. Uh, that is also a ton of fun. And, uh, they have ranked and unranked and team matches. The thing I didn't like about this game, uh, saying all this great stuff was the, was the voice chat. Nintendo way went way too cautious about it. To voice chat, you have to use uh, an app, right? You have to use their app. Mm. The, the I think it's Nintendo Online Chat or something. 
Uh-huh. Uh, I played it online, chatting with people before, but guess what? I was not even using that app. I was using Discord. <laughs> on your phone? On my phone to talk to people. I think that's that's that's, that's how people play it mostly with Discord. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't online. even using their freaking app. And their app shows you all this stuff about the game, like, oh, this is what the, the late stages are in rotation. And all this. They give you all this information. So about why, the game. why Discord over the Nintendo app? Because in Discord, I can just go somewhere where people are wanting to play Splatoon 2 and I say, hey, you want to play? And when they play. Uh, the Nintendo one, there's no chat There's no chat room with a list of people to play with. You just say, hey, you want to play? And there's nothing like that going on. You have two people you're going to play with. You Discord, to... I don't have to know them. I just go there and I'm like, hey, you want to so play? So you have to know the play? people on the Switch. You have to have them as friends to play with them on the chat, on the actual app, I mean? Yeah, that's how you invite people. You have to be in your friends list already. Hmm. It was made. The, the chat is they made is basically totally res, uh, is about you already having friends. If you so, you meet random people, right. friends with them, and you if can't you're do that. and if you're friends with the person, Nintendo, like you said, they're playing a safe. So if you're friends with them, that means you know them and you trust them. And then Nintendo figure out, okay, well, then they can play with them, and it's not some fucking uh, person that's going around talking sexist shit about women or guys or whatever the fuck, you know. I, I can see why I can see why Nintendo went that route, but it's not the route but, that uh, people our age are used to. But they, they, they also went the route of making it an app. It's not even in game. It's an app. Yeah, like, that is true. That's weird. They should have done it in game, but I, I don't know. It's it is fucking weird. So what about another of your top four? Uh the other game that I mentioned before is um, Elite Dangerous. It's an MMO. Uh, it's been out for PC and Xbox One for uh, over two years, and they finally the, the studio finally released it on the PlayStation Four uh, this past June, I believe. And it was fun. I played it for like a month straight, um, then here and there, and then uh, uh, I, I've been busy and other games came out, so I haven't really played it in a few months. But it, it was it, while I played it, it was fun. Uh, very, it, it's their approach to these like what No Man's Sky. Should have been what Star Citizen, I believe, is the game by Chris Roberts that's been kickstarted for like five years. And uh, they keep saying oh, it's almost done, it's almost done, but they haven't released it yet. Um, so it's be- between be- nah, between No Man's Sky and Star Citizen, Elite Dangerous is a fucking great game. You fly a uh, space, uh, sorry, a space, a spaceship um, that you. You start off with like a basic one and you can earn and earn money, do bounties, um, you know, space battles with pirates. It's fucking fun. So I like that game. That's my next one. You can continue, sir. I know you're purposely uh, falling asleep. It's a game that you picked, uh, which is fine. It's one, I don't think it, that's in anyone else's list. <laughs> I'll put it that way. Exactly. So it's my game. But if you had fun, you had fun. That's, Fucking had blast playing that yeah, game. Yeah, it's not a, it's not something like we voted on something or, or some committee. Yeah, it's not a game. It's, it's MMOs. MMOs hardly make, uh, game of the year list. I, 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 I did some research and, at least lately, um, there's so many of them out there that they hardly make game of the, you know, see them on the game of the year list, but. It it's rough. Maybe you have fun. WoW. WoW's the top one. Yeah, WoW was, you know, and then when their expansion World came out and. They were like, "Oh yeah, the, this game is is great because now we got a new expansion." But yeah, they they hardly it's hard make to, it. It's hard to put it as a as a uh, top game because it, it reviewers could play the some of the quests for a few hours and then review the game. But just MMOs are not like that. They're they're meant to be social and and they, and you have to put a ton of hours into it. It's not your usual game to review. That's why it's not going to be there. Yeah, if you, the, the expansion comes out for a while. I mean to play the but they're the, still the, reviewed the, the, the because, I, and stuff. because I've seen the game being reviewed. Party. Huh? They're still reviewed because I've seen people review them. Yeah, but every time I see a, a, a MMO reviewed, I know it's, it's going to be stupid because they, they. I know they did not play in-game stuff in, in the MMO. In-game is like uh, it takes a long time. People won't get to in-game for weeks or or, or months. Mm-hmm. It's it's a time sink. So if you can't. So these reviews are gonna be based off the first few quests, and and that's it. They're not gonna do well, anything in game. Yeah, the game is mostly the game is mostly as you mentioned, side quests, trying to earn money, trying to earn this, trying to you know level up your your gear, your character, 
until you're you feel confident enough to stand take tackle the uh the main plot if there is one in 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 that that particular MMO. Yeah. So I see that. So I guess I'll go with my number two. Yes. My number two. It's a PS4 game. It's in multiple consoles. <laughs> I'd be surprised. The only one on the PS4 that made your list. No, Crash Bandicoot. Oh, that's, that's right, Crash Bandicoot. I I do have an honorable list because there's other PS4 games I did play. It's just they came out last year. So I, I oh, I you know what? Me. Then I'm gonna have to do that honorable list. Um, maybe after my wedding, uh, and to have more time to play, I'll probably do that around January and do my honorable mentions for 2017. I have a lot of uh, other games here. I have uh, or Assassin's Creed. You mean 16? 2016. No games that came out last year. I'm talking about game. I'm talking about this January in a month. I will do an honorable mention. Honorable mention for games that I didn't get the opportunity to play this year. Got it now. A month from now, you gotta play how many more games? Whatever the <laughs> fuck I want. I did that shit. Blade Two is gonna take you. Uh, I I fucking play. I fucking finished the uh, Last Guardian, and when we did our podcast earlier this year, and it right came out before. last year. What the fuck are you talking about? Guardians like <laughs> we did the fucking podcast in February, and I, in in the Last Guardian, I finished it in January. Yeah, it came out in December, so it doesn't qualify for 2017. It qualifies for 2016. I already and reviewed it, and, it was and, my, and I mentioned it as my top game. You're not understanding what I'm saying. I guess so, because I'm talking uh, about you're the not, top you're because I'm just, Yeah, and I'm, and I'm talking about the top ga- top games for 2017 that I'm going to yeah. mention in a month from now when I get the opportunity to play them. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> no, thank you. I don't fuck. Yeah, fuck the game. So, number two, Shadow of War. Came out for multiple systems. I played in the PS4. I mean, it came out for PC, too. Uh, I even got the gold edition for this game. I loved the first one, Shadow of Mordor. Shadow of War is a game based in the Lord of the Rings world. Uh, you play this character that dies in the first one in the, begin- in the very beginning. And he gets revived by this elf that's dead already. He's like a ghost. And he's the one who made the ring, the one ring. If you watched the Lord of the Rings trilogy, I hope you all did. I'm sure Robert did too. No, I didn't. I I hate that trilogy. Right. It's for <laughs> fucking nerds. Robert's playing. He loves it. <laughs> when he was in Orlando, he, he I dressed love, up like Gandalf. I I uh, yeah with uh, I had my uh, my ma- magic uh, massive staff out in uh, in public, walking around with it. People were like, "Wow." That's impressive. I know. I said, yeah. it does magic yeah. tricks too. And then you woke up. <laughs> so, uh, so this whole game is built around. Oh, well, the first one was built around. Uh, you know these uh, orc captains, and they would have, you know, skills, certain skills, and they could become your rivals if they kill you. Because, and then uh, there's quests that are spawn off of that. This is a whole system based off of just cap. Or captains that you can kill, they can kill you. They get stronger if they kill you and become your rival. They're related to quests as well, uh, based off interactions you do with them. Uh, and, and this one, they build on top of that. You can also make your own army. You take over your fortresses. Um, there's some online to this as well. And I actually, I don't have PSN Plus, but all the online plays unlocked for me. And then we were talking about this on one of our podcasts. I think I theorize it's because they want you to pay for the loot boxes and the loot boxes are you buy them online and then uh they want you to use those things you bought in the loot boxes and on all your gaming or so if i don't have psn plus i wouldn't even bother with it but guess what they want me to bother with it so you don't know what you're missing sir you gotta get on that psn plus and it's lots of free games no the free games this month were fucking amazing you guess what i would not have had time for them yes you would have so no and then, uh, I'm gonna get it for you, you know, for Christmas, the PSN Plus. I'll buy it for you. Yeah, and I'll do nothing with it. <laughs> you, you will, because I'm gonna get you the gift card. Right. So, I, I love this game because, uh, I got sucked into the story. I know the story is very fanfic ish, as in very made up. It's not part of the actual universe of Lord of the Rings. Uh, you take over orcs, you make, build an army, you take over fortresses. I beat the story a long time ago. I am literally too, Conquest away from finishing the the extra stuff, which gets me the platinum trophy. 
So I'm very close to getting the Platinum Trophy on the PS4 for it. Wow, this might That's be something. your first Platinum tr- Trophy ever. It will be, because <laughs> it carried over from the PS3, so this will be my first ever. Which shows you how much I love this game. You're like, man, you, if, I don't like trophies, but this is a good comparison. Like, a Platinum Trophy, to get it for a game is pretty crazy. You have to have played that game a ton. Hmm. And you know, gone for all the quests and all this stuff, and I've done that. I'm at like an eighty something percent for this game. I got eighty six percent or something like that on the trophy collection. <clears throat> so uh, I'm still playing it, and they keep on unlocking, uh, not unlocking, but they they have review, they have there's some free DLC, which unlocks the like uh, one of the recent ones unlocked pit fight mode online. Mm-hmm. You have your orcs fight online, and you can watch them fight. As other people's orcs. And, uh, they are releasing stories, additional story content. If you bought the, you know, the, the special editions, which I did. So I'll get those. And, uh, I can, and I can't wait for it. And I keep on playing it. So it really would have been my number one game of the year, but it was unlucky because of the other game that came out this year. Oh, I already know what that is. Yeah. So how about you reveal your next game? Uh, so my uh, last game of my top games of 2017 is Uncharted The Lost Legacy. Naughty Dog brought it back, um, and I'm glad they actually separated this game. The original was going to be a DLC, and they decided last minute to just focus on releasing Uncharted 4 last year uh, on schedule, even though it was delayed like twice, but I guess they didn't want to delay it anymore. And that was my game of last year, and Uncharted The Lost Legacy is also one of the top games of this year. Great game. Uh, the character of Chloe and Nadine uh, return. Chloe wasn't um, the forefront in Uncharted 4 as she was in Uncharted 2 and even 3. And uh, it's great that she's back. Um, you know, the control, mecha- the control mechanics are exactly the same as Uncharted 4. Um, and I'm glad they actually made it as a separate game even even though, you know, it's just an expansion game uh, that you play for, and it's not pr- uh, fully priced like a, a full game because it's you can finish it like in nine uh, or nine or ten hours uh, in most cases. And uh, well, Uncharted was Uncharted Four was like it took me like twenty hours to finish it. So that that's just uh, you know my game of the year or not one of one of my top games of the year. That's my last. That's all I have. I I didn't like I mentioned. Uh, and I'll come around uh, in a month or so and do my honorable mentions of other games. I didn't get the uh, opportunity to play it uh, in 2017. So what is your uh, game of the year? Just mentioned, uh, I was going to mention that uh, Uncharted game. Uh, was it Lost Legacy? Mm-hmm, yes. I actually was going to buy it on Black Friday, but I didn't. I, it's a game mm-hmm. I'm interested in playing. I just didn't get to it. Mm-hmm. It's on, honestly going to probably be a game I play next year. Okay, so you'll mention it... Uh, as your honorable mention next year. No, I already have my honorable mentions for this year. Oh, Jesus. Uh, so I'll leave it as that. So when st- I play it, I play so, it. You're so stubborn. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, my best, my favorite game of the year. Not a surprise to many because I am a huge fan of the Zelda franchise. As am Breath I. of the Wild is my number one game of the year. As it is to many people. Yeah, some people say it's the best game of all time. Mm, yeah, I don't know. You didn't really play it. I, I saw your amount of hours you played on it. it. was 20. I thought that was a joke. It's not a joke. It was. It's, it is what it is. I got busy. Got sidetracked with other stuff. It's a, mm. it's a good game. I mean, if I were to do an honorable mention, yeah, it is, a, it is an honorable mention for me of 2017, definitely. But I just uh, didn't get to... You know, I wasn't fully in it. It's just a game that's it's not as fast paced as others as other games that I've mentioned in my in my list uh, just a few minutes ago. Uh, that's, yeah, that's, uh, that's it's, probably it's why not... I, I I just you know it got I got it got put on the back burner for now. But it is a great game. It is an honorable mention for 2017, definitely. So go ahead. What, right, what, so, so what what's your, what made it your top game? Before we go into that, a lot of people do think this is the best game of all time uh people went nuts because one reviewer actually rated it basically not a perfect score uh and ruined it being like the best rated game of all time ah. and people were furious of that 
Um, well, that's right, their opinion. Just manifest, huh? That's their opinion. Yeah, yeah, I get it. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just telling you what the fans did. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is obviously very highly regarded. Uh, but the fast pacing, it's a Zelda game. There's not gonna be Uncharted where your very first minute you're like jumping up an exploding tree and then you're trying to you know survive and live this is uh this is like you play skyrim skyrim's the same way wait it's an open world you do the quest and there's a story it's meant to be somewhere where you explore uh you know you explore you, you go through the story you find new things you you upgrade your items uh do quests all these kind of things mm-hmm. So why it's my top game, I put many hours into it. It's my other 95-hour game. In so, so it seems to me you're breaking up there. So uh, people, I loved it. People are, not hearing, it. people are not hearing the last uh, 30 seconds of what you said. So it seems to me that you're mentioning that uh, your your games are making... You consider a game to be a top game because of the amount of hours you put into it. Get the fuck off Wi-Fi. <laughs> you're what? <laughs> My Wi-Fi is excellent. It's your fucking computer. I'm wired. And I'm, I have a 16. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting oh, great. I'm getting great signal on my end. Nah. Full bars and everything. So this game, uh, like I said, it, I don't know where I was off because of your crappy Wi-Fi. Your tu madre is crappy Wi-Fi. Doing the game. <laughs> See what? Continue. I can't. I can't hear you. <laughs> okay. You hear me now? Perfect. I've been hearing you perfect for the last minute. Oh, might as well edit that out. So, Zelda: Breath of the Wild. Uh, as soon as you get it, you go out, explore. You see lots of references to, to the history of Zelda, and uh, the story. This is the first time there's voice acting involved in the game. Uh, they did changes that were bold of them. Because people are used to, there's a dungeon, you get keys, then you fight the final boss. And you open chest and you upgrade your weapon of, in that dungeon because it's used as part of the puzzles of the dungeon. That's your typical Zelda game and it has been for an extremely long time. It's changed. This one is not like that. When it comes to dungeons, there's not like your typical dungeon with keys and stuff. Uh, there is a these things called divine beasts, and you get in them, and then you try to get them unpossessed, basically. Uh, you there is puzzle solving in those things, but they're not require keys. There's a few places that, that require keys, uh, very, very, very rarely. Uh, so, and then those things, and uh, another thing that's kind of interesting is you fight the final boss. I mean, I guess technically you have to go through the story a little bit. But within the first few hours, you go and face the final boss if you wanted to. Uh, people have done it, but it's nearly impossible. It's super hard. Did you, have you even tried it, Robert? No, the final boss? No. no. I'm not even going to try that. No way. No, you would die instantly. You would, you would die even getting there. Yeah, It, it no is point. very tough to do that. But anyways, the story itself is that mandatory. You don't have to go through that stuff. When you feel like you can't go out, you could go do it, go do it. But there's reward in doing it because you get store unlocked, you get more items unlocked and skills and all this kind of stuff. So it pays off to play out the whole story. Right. And you get an additional scene for doing, finish off a certain quest line. And, uh, there's many things to do in the world, cooking and, uh, and, uh, upgrading your armor with the fairies. Just, uh, there's yeah. all these more epic monsters out in the world. Uh, temperature matters, time matters, uh, things respawn. I'm actually uh, at the part where I was trying to unlock the, uh, well, not unlock, but power up my Master Sword. And I can tell you that is extremely difficult because uh, you start off naked <laughs> and you have huh. to go throughout uh, 13 stages without dying. It's really tough. I hadn't even unlocked the first sword. So I tried to do it as soon as I got the sword, though. So I might actually try that later on when I get more hearts and more stamina. But anyways, um, to me, this is this is an epic game. Uh, with the Switch, and this was the release game. I got it right away, pre-ordered it, 
I got the special edition. I should have got it in the master. I had a chance to get it. I didn't. Um, you know, this with, is the first the special edition that you got. Does that what? What does it bring? Does it bring a little art book, or art book, and a CD, uh, a C- the soundtrack, or just the game and something else? It brought the game. It brought a map. Uh huh. It brought the soundtrack, and it brought a coin, and it brought also a carrying case for your Switch, which is well, it's a high high uh, high quality product. So the soundtrack not- is on CD. Yeah. So I got the fucking uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Special Edition. Comes with the art book, the game on a steel um steel, steel case, book. and the fucking soundtrack. Now, I just walked around my house. I have no fucking CD player. And I'm thinking... In your car. My car has no CD player. Who the fuck has a CD player these days? Everything's fucking downloading. So why didn't they just really give you a code that you could download the soundtrack? I've seen that happen in other games. They, why didn't? It, that's just ridiculous. Who the, I don't have a fucking CD player in my house. Nope, not even in my car. Not even on my computer. My my laptop doesn't have one. Nobody uses that shit. And I, and I was like, I'm like, damn. Okay, so if I want to listen to CDs, I have to buy a fucking CD player to connect to my computer that costs like fifty bucks. I'm like, how can your car that. not have one? Uh, there's Javier. Your car is used. You have a used Lexus. Back then, they 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 did still make CD players Back and then, cars. This is 2014 car. That's a like fucking that old. old car. My 2014 Nissan had a CD player. 2017, 2018, uh, 16, no CD player. Because I looked That's at two Hondas and they none of them have had a CD player. You also got some base edition. No, because nobody listens to CD. That's not a feature that you could add it, but that's extra fee. I don't want to add that shit. Exactly. Some base Everybody, I have all my CD. music, most of my music on my phone. So I just ridiculous. That's just something that I want to voice and get out there to develop. Uh, you know the studios to fucking release downloadable codes. CDs are are fucking extinct. You know it's fucking. I do ridiculous. agree. You should have an alternative. Yeah, I've seen games do that. It's just ridiculous that the fucking, uh, you know Nintendo and, and the, the the publisher of this game, whoever the you know and of other games. Oh, here's a CD. No, the CDs are dead. Best stores aren't selling them. Walmart CD selection is small. Target is small. Best Buy is own, some Best Buys don't even have CDs. It's just stupid. But whatever. I just wanted to voice that a little complaint. Yeah, someone's there. angry about CDs. Fuck CDs. If you don't have a CD player, then send it to me. I'll, I'll listen to music. Why? I don't even know why the fuck you have a CD player. My my desktop, my car. Desktop. I'm fine. Yeah, man. You can play it in your PS4. What are you talking about? You can do that. No, fuck that. My PS4 is for games, not fucking music. It's supposed to be this multi-media thing, though. Fuck. Well, yeah, it is. I can stream movies and stuff. Watch oh, Blu-rays. Play City? No, no, no. Fuck that. <laughs> fuck that. You just don't want to do it. So, uh, just to wrap up this awesome game. It's public. It's, this is Breath of the Wild. It's going to be like my top three game of, of, of all time kind of game. Top three? <laughs> What's the other of two? I don't know. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm not making my list now, but it's gonna be a top uh, three of all time for me. Uh, okay. And uh, the first time I actually ever bought like a season pass for any game, I never bought any season passes. The only time I ever bought DLC before was uh, was basically Borderlands, the first one, and I I, I didn't like pre-purchase them. I bought them when they came out, and people talked what they were doing and what it did, and I bought it because I was playing the hell out of that game. Uh, so this one I pre-purchased purchased it, and uh, they just dropped the second one, which just completes the season pass. Uh, I seen the trailers for it, just like a motorcycle now and stuff. Uh, some additional story. So I'll, I'll go through that uh, here, you know, soon. I'm just going through Xenoblade Two. I'll, I'll probably start switching it up between the two. You get it? Switch it up. Uh that was a bad pun, sir. Very bad. Nah. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's my list. Just to Didn't go through it one time. Me. Nine, uh, eight Nintendo games. Eight. So biased, sir. I, yeah, you know what? Here's my honorable mentions. I would have put I would have put Rise of the Tomb Raider in that list. That was an awesome game. It came out October of 2016. I got it in the beginning of 2017. 
Yeah, same here. And uh, I love the game. It, this would have been, honestly, uh, I don't know. This might have been, this game definitely would have been after Mario Odyssey at, at least. Um, maybe in the top five here. Maybe I would have uh, knocked out Mario Odyssey in the top five. <laughs> hmm. uh, which would have made people mad too. Uh, but I love that game. A great game. Uh, another great game was The Last Guardian. It came out to, in December 2016. So literally it was only a month after it came out. You had, uh, it would have, this would have made my list. Uh, uh, you know, last year. You know, for this year, all the honorable men, I didn't play it till this year. I really did like the game, beat it, and that kind of stuff. Some other honorable mentions are all Nintendo Switch games. Uh, Arms, I, I liked it. It's just bad timing. It came out a month before Splatoon 2. Then Splatoon 2 came out, and I forgot about it. Yeah, you and the, uh, and, the, and, the and the rest of the world forgot about it. Yeah, they had some event for its Arms like uh, a few weeks ago, and I played that. And I was like, wow, I haven't played this in a long time. I played it for a few hours, and then I uh, haven't played it. Ending it since then. Uh, they they've been trying to up, do little updates and try to get, get people to play it. It's a good game. It's not a bad game. It's just if you want to play online for the Switch, it's just Splatoon Two is a big, big, big you know numbers getter or whatever you want to call it. Um, others were also it'll do two. I reviewed this game uh, maybe an episode two, uh, a few episodes ago. Uh, came out in November. I got it. On release date, and I beat it. And um, basically, I said uh, this is a lot like a link to the past. It's a tribute to a link to the past. And another one I didn't have in this list. It's a weird reason not to have it on uh, the list of uh, Mario Kart you know, Deluxe for the Switch. I played this for the Wii U. I owned it for the Wii U. It was re-released on the on the Switch with all the DLC, so I didn't have the DLC at all. So that was kind of nice. And then I get to play with you, and it's you, I could play it if I want to on handheld mode, that kind of stuff. I didn't put it in my top ten just because it was a game I already played before, and it was just a re-release. Uh, that's the only reason I didn't do that. It's kind of weird to say that because Cash Bandicoot did get re-released, but in a sense, it was remade, though. So Mario Kart, in a sense, was just re-released with, the, with stuff added on to it. Um, those are my honorable mentions. Uh, yeah, I played a lot of Switch this year. Oh, shit ton of it. Yeah, I have games on my PC. I just um, haven't gotten around to it. I did. So no honorable mentions for the PC? Yeah, I will because uh, okay, so give I did us, get give it this us, year. Give us a couple. Yeah, Rocket League. This probably was in the... Uh, actually, I don't even sure if it came out this year. I did uh, play it a lot. No, um, I don't think so. It came out this year on the PlayStation, I believe. I don't know. I'm looking at it now. Uh, it was released in 2015. Uh, there you I go. Bought, I, well, I got it. I bought it in November of 2015. That's why I think it's last year. So, uh, no, it's an awesome game for me. I guess it came out on PS4 last year. I'll mention it because of that. <laughs> uh, there's games I need to play. Uh, Doom. When did Doom come out? Doom came out last year. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, almost two years ago. Uh, March of last year. Was it March? Yeah. And th- I'm looking at it now. I didn't buy it to till June of this year. Wow. It's June uh, of this year? Sorry, not this year. Sorry, sorry. Last, last year. year. Oh, okay. Last year. I bought it in June of last year. Obviously, I loved it. And I played it a lot. So I, I guess it's an honorable mention. But well, you, you mentioned that in the in the podcast we did earlier this year. You yeah. mentioned it. Hey, it came out this year for the Switch. Never, I didn't buy it for the Switch. Yeah. Uh, another one uh, is PC also. I played it. I bought it last year. I think I got it basically when it came out, close to it, maybe a few months after, which, which was uh, Dead by Daylight. Dead by Daylight. Basically, you can play uh, a mon- like a horrors monster, and you have to kill people in a camp. Uh this this multiplayer online multiplayer only, so you have to survive. So it's like survive. Friday the Thirteenth, the video game. Huh? It's like that Friday the Thirteenth game. Well, Friday the Thirteenth is based off of this. <laughs> this came out first. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I think uh, I was thinking more. I think that's about it for me on the PC. 
those are the games I play in the PC. I'm obviously behind. I haven't played other things. Uh, and some of these came out in 2015, but I didn't play it until this year. Uh, honestly, this is the. It's been a while since I was really more on top of games, and it, and this year I was pretty much on top of it. I was able to name at least ten games, and I played more than ten games that were currently this year. So I just found out this. Um, wanted to throw it in there. So Street Fighter uh, 30th Anniversary Collection is being released. So 30th Anniversary is this year, which I find it strange that they didn't release it this year. They have a a, a release date of May. 2018 for the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection coming on the PS4, Xbox One, PC, and Switch. Are you a big Street Fighter fan? Um, um I have four, and I played two a lot. Two and four are the ones I played the most. Two and four. Uh, so this is gonna have I'm not every. Gonna jump on this it. is gonna have every game except for four. So everything, everything before four, it's gonna have Street Fighter. Then well, that, it doesn't have five then. Or Super Street Fighter 4. No, those, uh, I said every game before 4. Uh, so it's going to have the original, uh, which is just Street Fighter, then Street Fighter 2, then Street Fighter 2 Champion, Hyper Fighting Street, uh, Street Fighter 2, then Super Street Fighter 2, and all their versions. The so Street Fighter Alpha series, and the Street Fighter th- uh, um, thir- three, you know, 3, Street Fighter 3 Second Impact, and Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. All of that's going to be released, uh, on, as I mentioned, on the Switch, PC, Xbox, PS4 in May of 2018. Now the games that are on that list, uh, that that I love this Super Street Fighter 2 and um, Street Fighter Alpha 2 were my favorites. I didn't really play three that much. Uh, I played three and the original three, and then three Second Impact. I don't think I played Third Strike. I can't really say how great those games are. But uh, I hope it's priced uh, nicely. So, and if it is, I'll I'll be picking it up. Maybe on the Switch. Just, mm-hmm. just, just a few games I want to. Just three games I want to mention. Top of my head, that I would have wanted to play this year, and I didn't. And that was Cuphead, that came out for the Xbox mm-hmm. and PC. Why didn't you play it? Time. It's only twenty bucks. Uh, I will play it next year for sure. Cuphead. It's a game I really want to play. Uh, another one will be Horizon. In Zero Dawn, ah, it I was g- unfortunate that it came out like a week or two before Zelda. It was actually, I wasn't it, actually buy it, because- it actually came out four days before Zelda, same week. Right, I'm like, uh, I'm not gonna buy this because I'm gonna be obsessed about Zelda when it comes out. So I didn't buy it, uh, and it's an open world thing, so I'm not gonna play yeah. it that close to my time playing with Zelda either. I actually bought the complete edition. Uh, it came out last week on the PS4. It has the original game and it has the. Downloadable code to get the uh, Frozen Frozen Wilds, I think it's called, whatever the expansion. Uh, so yeah. I got that uh, in it. And it also brings up like a free uh, uh, PlayStation 4 dynamic theme and I think a couple other goodies like extra armor or costumes or something like that. Yeah, so that's, I think that's a game out just by the looks of it and people talking about it. I'm pretty sure I would love this game. I was excited about it at E3 uh, last, you know, uh, last year, but I just didn't get the chance. And another one was uh, South Park, the fractured hole, fra- fractured butt hole. Um, I loved Sick of Truth, and uh, this is something I would buy on PC because um, I have played the first one on I PC. I was almost, I almost bought that over. It was either it was either that one as well, uh, or Xenoblade Chronicles? And I'm like, ah, let me get Xenoblade Chronicles. So I got that. I just mm-hmm. don't see, I don't see myself paying. Sixty dollars for a game that it seemed like it was made like for like the forty dollar or thirty dollar price range. I mean, honestly, I played the uh, first Sick of Truth and I beat the story in like in ten hours. Uh, I assume this is gonna be about the same amount of time. Again, I uh, to me, it's not about the the hours. It's about the the look. The you know, it's just I don't I don't, I don't see it being a a game that costs millions of dollars to to justify. A sixty dollar price tag. That's yeah. that's my uh, reasoning for not picking it up, at least not at the sixty dollar price tag. Well, uh, I'm sure there's other games, but I'll just stop it there because we talked a lot about video games. Oh, I wanted to talk about a movie we saw recently. What did we see? Thanks killing. Oh fucking a! Thanks killing. Oh no! <laughs> Please stop! Just stop it. So this whole thing started with me texting you 
on like Thanksgiving. I text you a picture of a turkey, and it says, nice tits, bitch. Gobble, gobble, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I think you were saying, like, what the hell, you know, that's funny, what is this? And I was like, oh, this is from a movie. I haven't watched it yet. And then we were like, oh, let's watch it and review it. I saw it on Black Friday. Yep. Because I did not go shopping on that day. I stayed home. <laughs> Uh, Amazon Prime video. Yeah, it was, has it's not it. Amazon Prime. Yeah, yeah. Uh, originally, so it was as you can imagine, uh, cheaply made, very low budget. I don't even think it reaches it to the thousands or tens of thousands of dollars. It's like very low budget uh, film that the actual director tried to dis- find a distributor, and uh, nobody would distribute it. So he just started selling the DVDs himself on on Amazon. And that's how it spread. Yeah, uh, it's like I said, it's one of those movies that uh, it's bad on purpose. So it's funny, <laughs> like, like kind of like almost like the like the room. Everybody's talking about the room. Room is, uh, no, is a bad movie. The room is a it. it's it's a different kind of bad movie because the room it was meant to be serious. <laughs> the room, the the director Tommy Wiseau thought it was going to be this great fucking movie and the world didn't see it that way. These people knew they were making a shitty, bad movie. They're just doing it just for fun. That's what I yeah. got out of the Thanks Killing. There's no way they knew they were making a fucking masterpiece with this shit. By the way, I actually, uh, now that you mentioned that, I actually saw The Disaster Artist today. So That's cute. I know. I will talk about that another time since uh, this, it's uh, I'm getting tired. Uh, so go ahead. Thanks, Killing. What did you What did you hate about her? What did you love about it? Oh, it's about a turkey that is brought back to life. He's um, <laughs> this t- turkey is basically gonna go after these college kids during the Thanksgiving and try and just trying to kill them. the The first scene in the movie uh, just goes back to the past, uh, and uh, he's the turkey's chasing this pilgrim lady, and her boobs are hanging out. She's shirtless. Boobs. You mean tits. We're adults here. Tits. Only kids say boobs. You get the idea. <laughs> and uh, he's about to kill her with an axe. And he's like, nice tits, bitch. And axes her. <laughs> That's how the movie opens. Like, okay, what is this? <laughs> yeah, what is this shit? The movie's not long. It's like an hour and like three or four minutes, and, and the credits make it seem a little longer, but it's not a long movie. If you guys have Amazon Prime Video, just <laughs> if you have an hour to kill, you can watch that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this turkey's full of one-liners. They are funny. My my favorite one is the stuffing one. Yeah. <laughs> to set up that scene, uh, he's gonna kill one of the college girls. Uh, basically, in the movie, they make her out to be a slut. That sleeps with anybody. So she's having sex with some guy. Uh-huh. And then the turkey comes in, kills, kills the, her, guy. the guy, mm-hmm. and then starts having sex with her from behind. And she kind of realizes things are different going on here. And then, you know, he starts doing it to her. Well, she st- she realizes when he's already started doing her. Right. And, and then she turns around and sees him. And she screams. And he's like, and he's like, you just got stuffed, bitch. Que <laughs> come pinga. <laughs> so, oh shit! That's the kind of movie this is. The, look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna set it up for you how 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 ridiculous it is. So I almost turned it off at this point. They the turkey goes to the house of one of the the girls, one of the uh, the high school girls. Um, and when he gets there, he kills her Father's father. Boys. He kills the father, takes his uh, the face of the father, and puts it on his on his face. This is a turkey, you know, two feet off the ground, whatever the height of a turkey is. The girl comes with the with the, with the guys to, you know, to, to warn the father or do something at the house. And the turkey opens the door and the girl then looks down and she's like, hi, dad. Like, really? Hi, dad. That's a fucking turkey. And she's calling him dad. And the, her friends are like, hey, Mr. Blah, blah, blah. They're all acting like this fucking turkey is the father just because he's wearing this face. 
I, I right there. I almost turned, unquote, it, I almost turned it off there. I almost turned it off there. I was just like, what the fuck is this? Quote unquote acting. <laughs> That's bullshit. They are looking two feet off the ground. Her dad is like six feet. <laughs> yep. Uh, it's just a fucking like, uh, like they probably wanted. To, they could have made it a, into a cartoon, and maybe it would have been better. But as a live action movie, it was just fucking silly. Just it was fucking. Yeah, I guess. It's just a low budget, silly movie about a fucking killer turkey. <laughs> they have a sequel for this, but they skipped number two. And they went to number three. <laughs> on purpose. <laughs> on purpose. <laughs> so you'll find Dance Killing and then Dance Killing 3. 3. Yeah. Which is supposed to take place in space. Is the, Do they have Dance Killing 3 on Amazon? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Are you going to watch it? Why not? Do you want to watch it? <laughs> no, I don't. Part 3 has more notable actors. <laughs> Normal? What, they got a bigger Normal budget? Notable. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. I can't believe, pe- I can't believe people um, actually <laughs> invested money on the, on the sequel. Oh, yeah, yeah. When I say notable, I mean they did something at least. The, the, the first one had like people who did nothing. I think the, the, well, except the, one person, the third dad. one was actually put on Kickstarter, so they raised some money. Maybe that's what, why it increased their budget. Oh, yeah. that's, that's the research I remember reading about uh, the third one. Which is actually the sequel to the first one because they just skipped, like as you mentioned, two on purpose. Yeah, the, the star of the first one, which is, he just plays the dad of, and the sheriff, he plays two roles in this movie. Um, he, uh, wait, is it the sheriff the dad? I forget. He now. goes by the name of the, in real life, General Some Shit. I'm like, General Some? What, what's he the general of? No, I don't think you're, we're on, <laughs> on sync here. But his name is Chuck Lamb. He usually plays corpses on, on TV shows and movies. That's what he's known for. So okay, still don't know who guess he what? is. Huh? I still don't know who he is. But anyways, you just you just got stuff. You, you probably see them dead on something. <laughs> so, yeah, he gets uh, he gets stuff. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the movie, obviously, uh, like I said, full of cheese. It's hilarious because uh, how bad it is. And uh, one-liners up the ass. <laughs> I recommend watching it with friends and making fun of it. Yeah, every single time he uh, says a one-liner, just uh, have a shot of uh, whiskey or vodka or your liquor of choice. Yeah, I see the budget here. 3500 You see? <laughs> it's extremely low budget. like Unbelievably you know, low maybe budget. Maybe we should do this. What? A like movie? a movie that's budget of three thousand. <laughs> yeah, we could think about it, and then release it on Amazon and make make bank. What? 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 What do you? Any ideas? Or you don't want to say it on the air? We can do my ninja movie. Uh your ninja movie. When we talked about it sixteen, seventeen years ago, it is a billion dollar budget. Right. I don't have a billion dollars. Do you? Uh, I c- I can borrow some. Okay. <laughs> I don't think our listeners have heard of your ninja movie, but maybe we'll talk about it one day. Yeah, the whole idea is this ridiculously budgeted movie, <laughs> billion dollars. You want to talk about it now? Then I mentioned it a little bit. Okay. I, I honestly forgot some of it. <laughs> this is all over the place. You have Basically, to, you have to have you have to write it down because when we. When it comes time to make the movie, we need to have this uh, all planned out. So the, the budget's a billion, not because we need special effects, because that's how much blood I need in this movie. <laughs> the movie's going to be eight hours long, so I also need the budget to use to upgrade theaters to create, to, you know, to install toilets in their seats. <laughs> Why toilets? There's no intermission. Well, no you intermission? Take, no intermission. You have to take a shit well, right there. <laughs> Well, what about our, your legs? What if you need to stretch your legs? You just pull them up. Would you have a, uh, like a massage uh, 
chairs or something that massage your legs? Yeah, I'm sure you know somebody could do massages. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's gonna be just ridiculous stuff. Like uh, I remember one thing was about. I, I took it from uh, what's that movie with uh, Arnold? Which movie? The steel, you know, sword. Uh, what's it called? Conan. No. Conan. Is it Conan? Yeah, he's Conan the he's Barbarian. He's like Crumb and all this stuff. Conan right? the Barbarian. Yeah, I, I can't remember the scene in the movie. Something about he's saying this, this sword is going to cut you down. Man, I, I can't set it up right because I can't remember this, the scene. Mm-hmm. I just had scenes where the ninjas is doing these ridiculous things and killing people like nothing because this what would happen in real life. And just basically destroying everything, killing everybody. In real life? Yeah. Uh, the Last Samurai is a, based on a true story, and they just got killed in that movie. No, it's Hollywood. It's fake. It's By Tom Hollywood. Cruise. Tom Cruise killed a ninja. Yeah, Tom Cruise was in The Mummy Returns. Look at him now. That was a piece of shit movie. <laughs> we went to Universal. We didn't see anything about the dark universe. Nope. It was like it never happened. Yeah. <laughs> they completely ignored it. <laughs> they had Mummy Returns merchandise in the Mummy ride. Nobody was buying it. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> Nobody, man. Universal doesn't know what the fuck they're doing. Yeah. <clears throat> Not a clue. What other stuff? That's pretty much uh, what you want to mention so far? Yeah, I'm I'm good. You're good? All right. Good in the hood. Good in the hood. All right. Well, thank you again for a fun weekend in uh, Orlando. Um, Yeah. I won't mention what happened because you don't want to. It's not even. See, I make act like we did something stupid. No, we did it. We did it. We did it. Except that you took me to a gay bar, and uh, it was actually not for me. It was for you because you enjoyed looking at naked men. Right. No. <laughs> we just went to Universal Studios. Uh, ate a lot uh, of junk food and played miniature golf. Went to a, eight restaurants and went to a strip club. What was that? It. What was that fucking game? The not that fucking game. What was that? That that bar, Player One. Is that was yeah, that what it's called? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was all right, um, but it's just they had a lot of like I don't know weird games. I liked it a lot. Yeah, I guess it was just tiny. It was kind of awkward to walk around. I guess it, there was their point, making it feel like something from the eighties. Yeah, and I felt like it. Yeah. One of the guys uh, in our group <laughs> was, was like, let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> we were there like maybe not even an hour, like 45 minutes. Yeah, that sucked. I mean, it, we paid five bucks. Let's enjoy ourselves. Five bucks. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. But it's definitely worth checking out. If you guys are in that area, check out Player One. You're into retro gaming, arcade games. They also have modern games. You sit down on a, I guess, a sofa and play like Xbox One, PlayStation Four. They even had a Sega Saturn. I was playing Darkstalkers in the Sega Saturn. So that was neat. All right then. So that's it for us. Hasta mañana. Later's and follow us at Bits for You podcast. Oh, that's right, Bits for You podcast. Twitter. That's on Twitter. Hasta luego.